Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll now be reviewing a hypothesis test for a proportion. So if you're ready, let's get started. So for a proportion, hypotheses are stated in the terms of a population parameter or lowercase p for the population proportion. The sample statistic that we're going to use to understand the population is p bar or the sample proportion. Note, the same as before with means, the null hypothesis must have the equality symbol where it's equals less than or equal to or greater than equal to. Finally, the significance level or an alpha will determine the rejection region. So fortunately, the concepts for a hypothesis test for a proportion are very similar as working with means. Therefore, we will focus on working through examples using the critical value and p-value approaches for a proportion. Here are a few examples of null and alternative hypotheses. On the left, we have the null hypothesis that the population proportion is greater than or equal to 0.30 or 30% of the population. Looking at the alternative hypotheses, we see the less than sign, so this indicates the direction of the test. So this is a sign, it's a one-tailed lower test, and the rejection region will be on the left side of the curve. On the right side, we have the null hypothesis that the population proportion is less than or equal to 0 0.30. Now, this is a one-tailed upper test and the rejection region is on the right side of the curve. Finally, in the middle here, we have the null hypothesis that the population proportion equals 0 0.30. This is a two-tailed test and the rejection region is on both sides of the curve. Whenever you see equal sign in the null, you know this is a two-tailed test. So when do we use a hypothesis test for proportion? Proportions involve categorical values. So think categories or words where we have two possible outcomes. A success, which simply means it has the characteristic of interest or failure and it does not have that characteristic. So for instance, if we think about the Airbnb data, I could do a hypothesis test for the proportion of listings that are apartments. The characteristics I'm interested in is whether it is an apartment. Other examples include customers that like or don't like a product, or items that are manufactured are either defective or non-defective. So if this sounds familiar, this is a binomial process because there's two possible outcomes. So let's look at an example. Amazon claims that the proportion of dissatisfied customers is less than 10% or 0.10. To test this, a random sample of 100 customers is selected and it turns out that six of them report being dissatisfied. Using a 0.05 significance level, which is the alpha, conduct the hypothesis test using the Z statistic critical value approach. So the null and alternative hypothesis is going to be based on Amazon's claim. The proportion of dissatisfied customers is the population proportion and because in this story it says less than 0.10 and there is no equals in it that means this is going to be the alternative hypothesis we will then write the null hypothesis as p is greater than equal to 0.10 and then the alternative is p is less than 0.10 next we want to identify the alpha level so that's 0.05 significance level so that is where our cutoff point for the rejection region on the left side of the curve is going to be. We will also need to find the sample proportion or P bar. Here is the same formula we worked with in chapter seven, where we'll take the number of items that have the characteristic of interest and divide by the sample size. So we will take the six customers from the sample that were dissatisfied and divide by the hundred customers in the sample. And we get a sample proportion of 0.06. We will use the critical value approach here. As we learned in the prior video, we can use Excel to get the critical Z value for the alpha of 0.05. So we will input equals norm.s.inv and input 0.05 since this is a one-tailed lower test and the critical value is negative 1.645. Recall the Z critical value will be negative for a lower tailed test. So this is the cutoff point for the rejection region here. Now we must calculate the Z test statistic. Here is the formula here. Recall we have the sampling error in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we have the standard error for the sample proportion. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my numbers with the sample proportion for P bar 
the hypothesized value for the population proportion as p, and then the sample size as n. And we get a z test statistic of negative 1.33. So now we want to compare the test statistic to the critical value. Because the z of negative 1.33 is not less than the z critical value for an alpha of 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. We only reject when the value is in the tail or the rejection region. Based on the sample data, Amazon does not have sufficient evidence to conclude that the proportion of dissatisfied customers is less than 10% with the 0.05 significance level. Let's go ahead and wrap this up and work through problem 9-30. Suppose a recent random sample of employees nationwide that have a 401k retirement plan found that 18% of them borrowed against it in the last year. A random sample of 100 employees from a local company who have a 401k retirement plan found that 14 had borrowed from their plan. Based on the sample results, is it possible to conclude at the alpha level a 0.025 level of significance that the local company had a lower proportion of borrowers from its retirement plan than the 18% reported nationwide? So first, we must identify all the key pieces of information from the story. We need to find the population proportion to construct our hypotheses. So our context clue here is the word nationwide. We can tell that this is our population proportion. Also, in the question, we were asked to compare the proportion of borrowers from a local company versus the proportion of borrowers nationwide. Next, we want to identify if this is a lower, upper, or two-tailed test. So we want to look for any directional language, and so looking through the story, we see that the word lower. So that means this is a lower two-tailed test. Next, we need to write our null and alternative hypotheses. Since the story says lower proportion of borrowers, we will then write the alternative hypothesis as p is less than 0.18. Then the null hypothesis will be the opposite, or p is greater than or equal to 0.18. The alpha level of confidence was given to us as 0.025. Next, we need to find the sample proportion. We will take the 14 employees that borrowed from their plan and divide by the sample size of 100, and we get 0.14. In part A, we need to state the decision rule as we will reject the null hypothesis if the calculated value of the z-test statistic is less than the critical value of negative 1.96 for a 0.025 level of confidence. We can find this critical value using Excel in the norm.s.inv function in the alpha of 0.025. Otherwise, we do not reject the null hypothesis. In part B, we must then calculate the value of the z-test statistic. So here is the formula that we just walked through in the example with the numbers plugged in for this problem. So we get a negative 0.04 for the sampling error in the numerator and 0.0384 for the standard error in the denominator, we divide those two and we get a negative 1.04. So again, I always recommend doing those calculations separately to avoid any order of operation errors. So if we use the critical value approach, since the test statistic in part B of negative 1.04 is not less than the critical value of a negative 1.96, and does not fall in the rejection region on the left side of the curve, we do not reject the null and can conclude that the proportion of employees who borrow from their 401k plan is not less than the national average. For part D, let's go ahead and use the p-value approach. So I've carried over the information from the prior slide here. To calculate the p-value in Excel, we will input equals norm.s.dist and then the z-value of a negative 1.04 that we calculated in the prior slide. Please note, I did not include a slide with these formulas again, since they are the same as for means, and we get a p-value of 0.1492. So if the p-value is less than the alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Because the p-value of 0.1492 is not less than the alpha of 0.025, we do not reject the null and conclude that the proportion of employees who borrowed from the 401k plan is not less than the national average. So you can see that the results of the p-value approach and the critical value approach should be the same. If not for you, you'll want to double check your calculations.
Well, everyone, that wraps up this video on a hypothesis test for proportion. And that also wraps up chapter nine.